We may get new maps, we may get a new balance patch, but some things simply never change. What I've got for you today is this week's finals of the Korean StarCraft League, and once again, we have these two legends facing off against each other in the finals. You would imagine that at some point, the randomized bracket would make them play against each other in like the round of eight or maybe the semi-finals, but no, it seems to be the finals every single time. So spotted right here in the bottom left hand corner in game number one. You know him, you love him, we have Hero. His opponent in the opposite corner with the Red Zerg drones, he goes by the name of Dark, and Dark, well, also an absolute fan favorite. So these guys, they bring out the best as well as the worst in one another. Oftentimes they play some phenomenal games that get incredibly scrappy, but also some very sloppy games. I remember the last time I... That was only really a few days ago, as I've been making this video anyways. I guess the video went up like last week, but anyways. <laughs> last time they played against each other, both of these guys hit so many supply blocks and just made so many sloppy errors that it looked like some of the highest level, no, some of the lowest level, high level StarCraft that I have seen over the- it's, it's insane. So, hopefully both of them are gonna feel a little bit more on point now. Obviously, they've had a little bit of time to practice the new patch and to mess around with the changes. So, hopefully, we're gonna see some proper, you know, high level gameplay. With like, you know, streaks of high level gameplay. And not, yeah, 17 supply blocks at like 36 supply. That's actually the classic supply block for Zerg. If you're a Zerg player out there, and you hit a supply block at 36 out of 36, that is what literally everybody does. I am almost convinced that figuring out how to not hit a supply block at 36, which really isn't rocket science, you just start up an overlord at like 31 to 33, depending on your build. Um, as long as you, yeah, just start up an overlord in time, you won't hit a supply block, I think you'll probably make the Diamond League. Just that one change alone. For some reason, I catch this in my own games all the time, I see it even from pro gamers. 36 out of 36 seems to be for some reason, the Forgotten Overlord. I know, it's a little bit sad. It's when a game gets a little bit hectic. Maybe not so much in this matchup. We see it more often against the Terran pieces when the Reaper starts roaming the map. Anyhow, what exactly are we gonna do, Hero? So, obviously, Hero is a big fan, ooh, all right, of the Stargate opener. He could have gone for a Stargate here. He had the gas for it, but it's gonna be the Twilight Council. All right, so, can be Charge, can be Adept, can be Blink, can be Dark Templar can be a variety of openers, and all of them are kinda, eh. That's how I feel about literally every single Twilight Council opener. They're all kinda, eh. They're kinda cool. Some of them are decent, but I don't think any of them... If you wanna, like, create a StarCraft II strategy tier list for Protoss versus Zerk in particular, I think it would be B, maybe A tier. Maybe Glaive the Depths are A tier. I think all of the other variants are, yeah, probably B tier. The Stargate opener, certainly still to go to with this new patch. But we'll have to see. Hero not actually starting up anything yet. I guess he's waiting for 100 gas. Boom. Okay. No boom. Dark Templar? Blink? I mean, Blink is insane. He does have a Stalker coming. That would make no sense, though. Ah, there it is. Okay. So we're starting off this best of five series with a Dark Shrine Rush. This is one of those builds. The reason why these programmers still mix it in, right? It's one of those builds that is... Played so rarely because it's pretty bad that the opponent also has very little practice against it. Now, does Dark need a lot of practice against this sort of thing? Not really. But keep in mind that Dark lately has been mixing in a lot of aggression in his strategies, right? He's been, for a little while at the very least, refusing to make banelings, and he was just messing around with a... Well, a lot of variety, let's just say it like that. A lot of aggressive variety. Proxy hatcheries, Ravager all-ins, Ling floods, all the rest of it. And I guess Dark Templar are pretty good against hatchery-based uh, Zerk aggression, right? You just put a couple DTs out on the map and life is A-OK. -okay. Looks like, though, at least judging so far here by the strategy of Dark, that we do not have the aggressive Dark today. We have a, uh, yeah, pretty standard macro focus opener. For some reason, Brenda right over there put the creep... I'm gonna back up, sorry, I wanna see that again. Brenda put a creep tumor down out of her mouth? Where did that creep tumor come from? Come on, we're ready for it. Here we go, here we go, here she goes. Oh, what's the other one? Weird? <laughs> I guess it's because it's at the bottom of the ramp. Yeah, that's how we always see them. All right, we want to see them. Anyways, I don't want to get into details there. All right, so at this point, Dark doesn't know that he's playing against Dark Templar. He has not seen the prism yet either. He's going to spot it here in just a moment, but the Zorklings have not actually had vision of it. So Dark should notice. Ooh, 
Ooh, no, that's a couple Dark Templar being warped in right there. I don't know if he sees that. Ah, uh, that could actually be a disaster. He's got a Spore Crawler over here. Spore Crawler in the main base. That is to deal with any sort of Oracle shenanigans. They would have already shown up. All right, well, that's, yeah, probably the queen that did it wrong, right? That must be the queen that did it wrong. We're gonna target the hatchery? Okay. Hero's here for the big bucks now. Yeah, he was waiting until that Spore Crawler would move down to the low ground. They do root very quickly. So Spore Crawlers, I believe, root like twice as fast as Spine Crawlers do. And in the end, I think he probably could have had the hatchery if he decided to really target it, but I guess it would have been a little bit risky. In the end, was this opener worth it? Honestly, it's not been bad. The main advantage here is that you can still follow this up, well, normally at least, with some Archon harassment. So I personally am a fan of this build, even though I do think it's kind of weak. You can follow it up with Archon harassment, but instead what we have is Shadow Strike. One thing to note as well, that on the back it is, Dark had very few workers. So he's been very busy preparing whatever he can here to make sure he doesn't take damage, that he's taking damage economically because he's trying to not take damage. You see what I mean? So he didn't really lose a lot of workers there. As a matter of fact, he's lost none. But he's forced to put so much respect on these Dark Templar, these men wearing capes. Do you think I'd deal more damage as well if I were to wear a cape? Oh my god, eight DTs. We have Blink. He could, he could murder these roaches. There's no way that these roaches are gonna win against... Okay, I thought for a second we would like blink behind the roaches and then kill them all. I think he could've. There's no way that like seven roaches are gonna... It's not very cost efficient though, I guess that's not really the point. Anyways, more Dark Templar inside of the main base. And we have started off this best of five series with Hero, who rushed out ten Dark Templar. Now so far he's done absolutely nothing with them. <laughs> Other than slow down the Zerg's economy a little bit by forcing them to make units, this opener has not really achieved anything. He does have a good economy on the back of it, and he's forced all of these units out of the opponent. He also forced Dark to, well, not really have that much economy here himself. But judging by the fact that Dark is now making about a gajillion overlords, I don't actually think that's a mistake. I think that's the man preparing to just do a Roach Flood. And that's a big problem with openers like this. How in the world are you gonna just simply stop the most ordinary Zerk timing? Look at the amount of production that we have right now for Hero. This is just a whole lot of Zerk. Yeah, okay, finally they have to be addressed. Battery Overcharge is gonna be pretty neat, I suppose, but the numbers don't lie. Okay. It was a cute attempt right here by Mr. Hero. Miss Rallied Immortal as well. Uh, that battery. Oh my god, the prism saves it as well. Lovely work. 14 probes have gone down. We have more roaches here working on whatever they can on the other end. Yeah, and what was a really cute start just gets destroyed by a, a sledgehammer attack, right? There's no elegant way to describe this Zerk attack. This is like the caveman style right here from, from Dark. He's like, oh, me have roach, me smash. Right? That's basically what it's come down to. In the meantime, Hero is like... Working at the circus, doing all kinds of cool flips and somehow, some way, moving his body around in ways you didn't think was possible. And and then, yeah, Dark just comes across the map with all of the units he's been forced to produce this entire game long. And just punishes him for it. Maybe Hero can still stabilize, though, because this is, of course, an all-in right here by Dark. He needs to do critical amounts of damage if he wants to play a macro game off of this. But I think just killing all of these probes, that's 28 workers down the drain. And then killing the Nexus on the back of this will be okay. I mean, we have some really lovely immortal juggling, don't get me wrong. And at this point, Hero still has 48 workers. Eh. I don't... Hmm. I want to believe, but I also don't. <laughs> becomes a very religious video all of a sudden. I want to believe, but... Uh, I don't know, man. Spire coming up on the back of this. Okay, so this is Dark saying, yo, get out of my game. At this point, Hero has not really got another choice other than make, I guess, Immortals and Sentries to really shut down the Roaches. And he's been doing an excellent job, actually. I thought he would have already lost at this point, if I'm being honest with you. But he's got that phenomenal prism juggling that kept him alive. The Spire is going to finish up in about... I think Mutas are going to be out in about a minute from now. Dark wants to see what's inside of that main base. All right, he sees the probe transfer. He sees a Dark Templar as well, fair enough. Yeah, he wants to see what's going on here and how much economy there really is for the Protoss player. 
Turns out there's actually a decent amount. There's just nothing that shoots up. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit sad. We are currently watching a Protoss player with a very slow death animation. He could definitely do an hallucinated phoenix, right, and scout. But here's the mutas, 10 of them immediately come up. And I've got a feeling that 6 sentries are not gonna do a particularly great job against 10 mutas. Now, they did get a guardian shield buff. The guardian shield now lasts uh, 2 seconds longer. That's nice. Yeah, there is a chance. There is a chance the dark messes this up. But that's, I think, what the win condition is. I mean, this is a good set of force fields to get started with. There's the mutas, though. They're gonna go after the prism first. Sentry's trying to give him the tickle death. One of the worst ways to go. I mean, they are buying a lot of time. Uh, stalkers are being warped in, but it's not gonna finish. Excellent split off right there by Dark. And that's gonna be yeah, the removal of the Protoss. It's a sad day to be a Protoss fan. GG. Game number two. We find ourselves on Oceanborn. Now, shout out, of course, to Hero for showing us why we rarely see anything but Stargate openers. Because that was essentially the best case scenario there for him, other than, like, the opponent not having detection, right? That would kind of suck. Yeah, going for a Stargate this time around does not surprise me whatsoever. Because he had a good economy, he did a bunch of damage on the other side of the map. Yeah, he didn't get a lot of kills. But then the Zerg comes across the map and you don't really have a lot of places to hide. I mean, it was pretty close. Admittedly, if he would have gotten that natural expansion with the Dark Templar and then continued to dance like he did, it would have been amazing for him. But he didn't. And yeah, it ended up with a game where Dark was just simply more comfortable. Okay, so. Hero did go across the map nice and early and he blocked his opponent's natural expansion. Dark, one of the very few Zerg players who's still just going for the good old 16 supply hatchery. I mean, a lot of Zerg players do like to do this, admittedly, but... Dark never really messes around with like the 15 hatch or the pool first shenanigans. Whenever he goes pool first, it's basically always for some sort of all-in, it seems. Oracle start here once again, by the way, for Hero. I say once again, not because he's done it in this particular series, but because he does it like 90% of the times I see him play against Zerk in literally every single game. Probably more than 90%. I want to say... Hmm. 90% would be 9 out of 10 games. He probably does it more like 19 out of 20 games. And he messes around with some other strategies, especially when he goes up against Dark. But most of the time, this is his comfort zone. The main advantage, of course, of opening up with the Oracle first is not only can you deal damage on the other side of the map, but not only can you make use of that Oracle later on in the game with revelations and just general scouting information. And obviously, you can kill Ravagers too. You can also grab yourself that third base nice and early. So with the Twilight Council openers, generally we don't see the Nexus until about the five minute mark. And now we're sitting at like 345 when that Nexus came down. It's just simply a better build. Yeah, Zergs don't really have a lot of offensive tools available early on to shoot up with, right? They have the Queen, I suppose, but using the Queen aggressively. I mean, maybe with the changes made to the Overlord, right? The Overlord drop. It may be a viable choice to bring those ladies across the map, but not something that Dark seems to be going for here. How many kills are we gonna get? One, two, three. Oh, no, that was a misclick. The queen over here ended up taking a, a zap. A zappy zap to the face. Unfortunately for her, but luckily for her brood. Twilight Council together with the forge on the back of this too. Dude, the shadow here, I swear. It's the only thing I notice. When I glance at any player's base at the bottom of this map, I always see the shadow of that sea monster first. It's kind of cool, though. It is kind of cool. Anyways, should probably be following around what's actually going on in the game. Loco, follow the shadow. Okay, fine, I'll follow the shadow. Where is it? Where? Oh, there it is. We need to give a name. Give me some suggestions in the comment section. Willy? Willy the Will? We need to free Willy, man. Maybe move him to the center of the map or something. I don't know. Give me give me some name suggestions. I'm sure you guys I'm sure you guys can come up with something cleverer than Willy. Do Zoomers even know free Willy? Because it may sound very inappropriate. I just realized that. Anyways. It does kind of look like an Orca. 
I'm, no, it really doesn't. <laughs> it's like a dragon, dude. I don't know what's going on here. It looks like one of those tentacle ships from Baldur's Gate. I really don't know what it is. Anyways, what in the world's going on here? Sorry, I've been talking about the sea monster for a long time. Dark has decided to skip the bailing nest. He's decided to skip the roach warren as he's rushed out the hydralisks den. Now hydras have been considered for a long time to be a strongly mediocre unit at best. Their upgrades are a little bit faster to research with the new multiplayer balance patch. And I haven't really seen anybody attempt a Hydra timing. But you know what? This does look like an awful lot of Zerg units. They have their range upgrade at this point done. That stasis is going to be critical to deny. Lovely work. Battery overcharge though. Obviously a very powerful tool that Hero does have energy for. Okay, he's just making more. I think he's just going to make more Hydras. He's now gone into the speed upgrade for the Hydralis 2. He's forced out the shield battery overcharge, so he decides to back off. Blink at this point is done. Plus one ground weapons is also finished for the Protoss. I've got a feeling this is not going to be good for the Zerk. Maybe I'm mistaken though. Normally, this would be the point in the game where Hero is the one on the offensive, right? And he would be doing so against a Zerkling with plus one melee type of army with maybe some Roaches and Ravagers to supplement the damage. This is against Hydralisks, and Hydras are far higher in damage per second than, for example, Roaches and Ravagers, but they also have like 5% of their health. Okay, maybe not 5%, maybe 50% of their health. That, that's a more reasonable number. What I'm saying, though, is since they're not armored and all that, they really do take a beating. But pure Hydra against pure Gateway unit should be pretty good, assuming Zerg has the numbers. Now again, look at the worker count here. 51 drones versus 65 probes. And this is not the first time that we've seen this. Hero, if he knew, would not be attacking. He doesn't need to be attacking right now. He's got the economical advantage. He really does not need to take this risk. Dark, man. Baiting his opponent to go for a probe push, or sorry, a uh, stalker push here, while the pro uh, the protos here had the probe advantage. Putting the Pro and Protoss. Actually, no. Maybe not putting the Pro and Protoss. Dark was putting the Pro and Protoss there. That's more reasonable. Stasis? Boom. Well, that will shut down any further regression for now. He can try, but... That is a lot of Hydralis, though. Hmm. This feels so uncomfortable. The thing is... Hero has not gotten himself the charge upgrade. He did not go into... Oh my god. He doesn't even have his entire army here. As soon as Colossi hit the battlefield, which I think is going to be the plan here next, that's a second Robo facility together with a Robo Bay. If he gets like two, maybe four... Oh, we're going to go Disruptors? But why? I think Colossi are way better here. Colossi deal bonus damage against light units. Not a lot of Zerg units are necessarily light, but both Hydras and Lings are. Disruptor is just going to be hit or miss. And this is suddenly a massive amount of Hydra. You guys can't see it, but I'm sitting with my hand on my forehead right now. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of this Zerg strategy. This feels so wonky. Hero doesn't need to do these things, though, that he's doing right now. The Disruptor got nerfed, right? It's smaller right now, and Zerg can micro against it. The Colossus would be so much better. Okay, now he starts up a Colossus. That, I think, is a great idea. Still, though, the Zerg units are starting to slowly fall. I think he should have gone charge into Colossus. Yeah, that, that Disruptor does very little. If he can keep this base alive, though, Prism ends up going down. If he can keep this base alive, this is still manageable. Because the worker count, again, it's still actually basically even here. Uh, Hero had such a large advantage that killing 23 probes does not even really, yeah, put him in a deficit. Okay. So there's the Colossus hitting the battlefield. No, don't go for an Immortal. I think he's really scared that this is a trick right here from Dark. That Dark has got like a mass roach transition on the back of it. Because Hero has been scouting on the other side of the map with those oracles, but it just requires one roach warrant to sit somewhere in a random location, right? And you can't properly, uh, you can't possibly scout the entire Zerg space. 
I think that's why he's a... Uh, yeah, the Immortal's not going to achieve anything here. I mean, it's nice for supplemental damage, I suppose, but it really doesn't do that much against Zerklings and Hydras. Colossi with range would be really sweet. He did end up losing the Robo Bay earlier, so maybe that's why, but he didn't prioritize making the Robo Bay when he started up an Immortal. Hmm. Okay. Dark going plus one melee together with plus one missile. So he's doubling down on this Hydra Zerkling army. Why, by the way, did he make the Robo Bay over here? Like, I think the Robo Bay was previously here. What's that spot? Yeah, I don't know. That makes no sense. Why would you <laughs> Why would you put your most expensive tech structure that doesn't need to be at the front at all for any, any reason? Why would you put that out there? Anyways, Robo Bay is gonna go down. He had space, right? There's plenty of room over here. He's gonna go into the extended thermal lens. Plus two ground weapons is going to finish up. And this is a difficult situation here for Hero to read, but I think what he needs to do is just sit. Maybe roam the map with a few units if you are so inclined, but you really don't need to be too aggressive here. If you're gonna be aggressive though, definitely bring an Observer. Lurker Den, by the way, on the back of this here by Dark. Maybe that's what Hero was confused for, but like the Lurker transition would be way too early. He really did not need Disruptors against that yet. Okay. Do we have a Hive? We do not. So this is gonna be Lair Tech Lurkers? Guys, if there's one thing you need to know about Lair Tech Lurkers is that they suck. Let's hold up right now. Did that, did that Colossus just walk into the Hydralisks? The guys wait for me! Guys, I'm the size of a skyscraper. I'm a big boy, I'll be coming soon. God, that hurts. That's painful, yeah. Immortal gets its barrier triggered. Now that Disruptor here is still forcing at least some of these Zerg units to turn around. Force fields here are now gonna seal that deal. I don't like the Lurker Den here very much. It's decent against Zealot run buys, but the problem is that without their ranged and the speed upgrade, Lurkers really do not do very well. Like, without their ranged upgrade, they're kinda... kinda mediocre at best. Now maybe he can make a couple of them and just burrow them in bases against like a charge lord run by, but we don't even have charge here yet. Hero, hero, can we, uh, there we go. Yeah, can we Can we get back to basics? Sometimes in a game of StarCraft 2, you can kind of defeat yourself by being too clever, or at least thinking you're too clever, when sticking with the basics is usually not a bad idea. These are lair tech lurkers. I just want to emphasize that we never ever see lair tech lurkers in StarCraft 2. They are slow to burrow, and they lack, I think it's two range. Does Seismic Spines give two range or three? Okay, fine, I'll Google it. Um, Seismic Spines. Okay, I'm Googling it. I'll follow this around for just a second. Yeah, it increases the range of the Lurker from eight to ten. And there is still no sign of an infestation pit or any sort of hive tech here whatsoever from Dark. So even though I may be a little bit critical of some of Hero's decision making, now look at that mini map by the way. Two massive armies from the Zerg are crawling across. This is a, a run by with slow zealots, love to see it. I'm being critical here of Hero, but I also, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, okay. Ooh. This is also not my favorite Zerg strategy, I'll be honest with you. I mean, if you can get them in the right place, they can still obviously pack a punch. Colossi are gonna outrange them, though. And even though they're not particularly amazing against Lurkers, they have the range and the Lurkers can't hit them, so... Should be alright. Another Robo facility coming up. Fleet Beacon in the meantime inside of the main base. Dark's actually just doing a plus two? Lair Tech Lurker all in. What in the... I don't... Like, plus two plus two is gonna finish up right now. It's Hydra Link Lurker. Darks, by the way, once again, are refusing to play Bane Links. So maybe he's replacing the Bane Link with the Lurker. Look at those Colossi, having a grand old time. <laughs> I, uh, no way. No way. You guys counter. You guys counter the Hydra. He was busy looking over here on the right side of the screen. 
Well, in case you were wondering why we rarely ever see these units coming out before Hive Tech, even though you can make the Lurker then at Lair, this is the reason as to why. They really are kind of trash before they get their ranged and their speed upgrade. And keep in mind, this is Hero coming from a pretty mediocre situation earlier on as well. You could bring an Observer here. Maybe an Oracle from earlier. ay 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 Don't now go losing this game, Hero. Don't go losing this game. I know you wanna try. I don't know the lyrics. I don't think those are the original lyrics either for what it's worth. Okay. So. We've got Storm. Oh, there it is. Mama's coming up. Mama! Ooh, woo, woo, woo. Did you guys know? Freddie Mercury was a weep. Mama, ooh, woo, woo. Okay, no, sorry. Sorry, I found out about this a couple of months ago and I think it's really funny. Yeah, this should be, oh. I was gonna say, this should be a landslide advantage right now for Hero. We're not even gonna see the new Mama ship because Dark's already dead. Alrighty, Heart Lit. That previous game was a perfect example of a Dark versus Hero match. <laughs> In case you have, for some reason, never seen them play against each other, that was an excellent example of a Hero versus Dark game. Where both of these guys are trying really hard to outsmart the opponent, but in the end, you end up outsmarting yourself sometimes. Once again, gonna be a Stargate opener. You guys wanna see a magic trick? Watch this. How does he do it? What? Oracle first? Huh? Excellent. Sorry, I'm having a little too much fun. <laughs> sometimes I wonder if people will just stop watching my videos if I don't talk about the games anymore. Because sometimes I find myself more and more over the last couple of months spending absolutely no time at all talking about the game. I do talk about the game eventually. It's just that when you've seen a lot of early games, and I'm assuming most people watching StarCraft 2 in 2023 have watched quite a few games, right? There's not that many new viewers coming in, so I probably don't have to go over the basics that much. But that being said, if you are a new viewer and you have like a question or whatever, right? Like. If you have something you would love to, for me to explain in a video, or you want me to go over, or you have something in a, in a matchup that you don't quite understand, or whatever. Um, the game can be very confusing, I completely understand that. Let me know down below in the comment section. I am more than happy to explain it. Now, what in the world is this? This is a four-minute fleet beacon. It sounds fun to say. A little bit of alliteration. Ah, I guess the, yeah. Four minute fleet beacon. It, it sounds kind of fun. Don't lose the Oracle. Good. That was a lot of drones going down as well. Seven workers already. Second Stargate. What are we rushing here, Hero? The Tempest did get an update. So the Tempest is a lot more microable than it used to be. Yes. Okay. What are we having over here, though? Dark is not too keen on playing against this sort of opener here. So what Dark has seen is an Oracle opener without a third base. So he's assuming that something fishy is going on on the other side of the map. And he decided to send his units across. I think this is a mistake here from Dark. Yeah, right now there's not a whole lot. But he can quite literally not touch these units. Assuming Hero micros them. These Tempers should be able to just destroy everything. You don't want to target fire the Queens, I would imagine. Obviously, if you can, like, overwhelm this Protoss wall and, like, get your links in and to just have the Zerklings destroy everything, it would maybe still be possible. The Tempest will eventually kill everything, but it's gonna take a long time. You know what? This might actually work out. He's just trying to buy time. You really do not want to have your Tempest shooting at Zerklings, though. That's a complete waste. I think that Bile just killed a whole lot of Zerklings, didn't it? Okay. Don't... G oh, too... <laughs> Look how much faster, though. You see that? They feel so much more nimble than they used to be. They were, like, big capital ships that were slow and sluggish, and now they're actually pretty responsive when you tell them something to do. This is when the Zerklings are starting to break in, though. Oracles are running out of juice. This may actually still work out here for Dark, but keep in mind that this is once more a Dark all-in. And as soon as this is cleaned up, those Tempests are gonna go across the map, and they're gonna go fishing. 
They're gonna go fishing for whatever they can. Hero decided to rush out the building damage upgrade, which really isn't something you need to rush out on these Tempests. It hasn't really achieved anything in this particular case so far. But anyhow, Zorkling's going around the site. Yeah, you do have to be cautious here, uh, Hero. He's just gonna counterattack apparently with the Tempest, just hitting whatever he can. He's attack moving, so not move commanding. Meaning that this is gonna... Uh, oh my god, no, 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 no. Don't say you're gonna throw this, Hero. Because this does hurt my feelings a little bit if you're gonna throw this. Okay, yeah. I don't think he needed to attack move with those units. He should have just gone straight across the map and just right click the hatchery or maybe right click the queen. But that hatchery is gonna be super dead. Can we get... No, 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 no. Hello. Hello. Hold, hold up. Hero! Sorry. I think he's busy at home trying to micro 17 different things all at the same time. But Hero, come on. There we go. Excellent. Sorry. I didn't mean to shout at you, but... I was the disappointed parent just now, and I don't even have kids. I have two cats. And as soon as Dark found out about it, he decided to GG out. Game number four. Match point right here for Hero. Okay. I'm assuming this will be a Stargate opener, by the way, from start to finish. But he does have a little bit of wiggle room now, so if you wanted to get fancy... But no, he won't. Ah, I was gonna say, he just spent all of his resources, I saw them disappear at the bottom of the screen. But the Stargate apparently got queued up over here on the low ground. So he's like, yo, Dark, you wanna, you wanna scout what I'm doing? Well, there you go, buddy. There you go, pal. Here is my Stargate. Always nice. Probably doesn't come as much of a surprise here, but... Still an interesting choice to just give your opponent all of the intel. There's still always a chance that it could be like a Phoenix first or a Void Ray first. Even though it may not be the primary option for most players out there, it's still gonna be yeah, something that Dark will not have to worry about this time around. Are we gonna commit? Ooh, we are. A little bit of a dance. Okay. Getting Zerklings is nice. If he can get a drone as well, it'd be huge. Gets one. I like what Dark was trying to do there. He was trying to force his drones to stack together so there was a 50 or so percent chance that the Adept would actually misfire and target the wrong drone there. So he would end up with two drones that were half HP. Sometimes you don't have a way to save your units and you gotta just take the best chance you can. Cute little move right there by Dark, but of course a good start here for Hero. Dark now making a ton of links, going across the map, achieving, well, very little. There is no attempt of a third nexus just yet, and you would imagine that this would be the moment for such a... such a structure. You would imagine that Hero is gonna make his own pyramid soon. Very little planning is required for a pyramid. Yeah. I always thought that... I guess this is proof that pyramids are built by aliens, guys. Whoa. I just... <laughs> I just realized that. Protosses are literally aliens, man. Whoa. Is the Earth flat? I knew it. The moon landing? I don't know, guys. Very convenient that the moon landing happened in 1969. Right. If I got to come up with a date for that, I would also come up with the year 69. I'm not gonna lie. Anyways. New Pyramid A is coming up right now, on the other side of the map. we are gonna warp in a bunch of sentries, interesting. So, did we make a Twilight Council yet? Uh, we do not have a Twilight Council. So, it's just a bunch of oracles flying around here. A delayed third nexus, but I guess that's because the Zerg decided to make so many links. So, he didn't really need to make such a quick third here either. And now we're gonna go into the plus one ground weapons and just a whole lot of gateways? Are we gonna go for... A prism here, or are we gonna go into immortal production? What's this? It's gonna be a prism, yeah. What is this robo facility for, otherwise? Is this just gonna be a gateway push? Because normally, you would be going for blink at this point, right? Or charge. One of the two. We're gonna go straight to robo bay. Interesting. Overlord's coming up. Observer. 
trying to scout out some creep tumors apparently parking itself right over here on this zerk intersection no traffic lights here so very dangerous place but that's all right Okay, now the Twilight Council comes up. This is a bit of a wonky build right here from Hero. It feels to me like he's not planning on attacking for a while and he just is sort of making <laughs> the structures he's gonna need eventually as the money comes in. Why buy everything at once where you can just, you know, make stuff randomly at certain moments? He's just going shopping. Yeah. He wants to uh, renovate his uh, his base, and he's decided, you know what I'm gonna buy first? A hammer. And then maybe at some point, I'm gonna... Okay. That... What wh What was that move? What, like, give me... What was that? We just saw two oracles. Sorry, I don't want to roast him, but... We just saw two oracles. Not that I could do a better job either, but... We just saw two oracles die for no apparent reason at all. It's gonna make it much harder now for the prism to come in, because normally the oracles are a distraction, and they're a scouting tool. Plus, they're very good when it comes to killing Zerk units a little bit later on into the game. He's looking around right now to see if it might be a Spire here, but no. It's gonna be a Hydra then here from the Zerk. Infestation Pit also coming up. No Baneling Nest though. Dark 2.0 does not like Banelings nearly as much as Dark 1.0. Alright, there's the Hive coming. Hydra Den. Getting its uh, arranged upgrade. And we're just gonna go good old Roach Hydra, is that what we're doing? Yeah, just Roach, Ravager, Hydra with some Zerklings for support. Prism over here, this is the anti-F2 prison. Or, prison. Prism. Where you just siege it up over here. So if you use the All Army Hotkey, which Hero does quite a bit, you don't accidentally All Army Hotkey your prism back home. This is the number one protos in the world. It It's a bit embarrassing. It is a little bit embarrassing, yeah. But it is okay. It happens. You may as well. It's just gonna take about an extra second or so to reactivate this prison when you do want to use it on the other side of the map. Just looks a little bit sloppy. That's all. Temple Archives here. Extended Thermal Lens. Charge coming up. Yeah, so basically what Hero is doing in this game is getting all of the tools he's gonna need eventually. But he took a bit of an interesting route in getting to this particular spot. He could have gone into, uh, yeah, the order that I think would have been a little bit more efficient, that allowed him to put more pressure on the other side of the map too. The downside of the way that he's doing it right now is that this is essentially allowing the Zerg to do whatever. The Zealot Harassment is not going to do anything. You're not going to be able to really get your Oracles out anymore because, well, they're they're dead, right? It kind of sucks. Uh, hard to harass when you're dead. And Zerg can just do whatever. So look at the creep spread here. This is Dark, just simply stepping up the actions per minute to spread as much as he can and to just do as much damage as possible. I think what Hero is probably gonna try and attempt and do is do like one big bulldozer attack where you don't worry about the creep. You just make a big ass army and just go through the center of the map and try to win the game that way. It's just that Dark already has such a good unit comp and he's not really taking that many drones here either that I don't see how that's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I think Dark wants to trade out roaches. Well, I say that as he fires up new roaches, but I think the era for the roach is nearly over. Yeah. The era for the Hive Tech Lurker has almost begun. Vipers are out. Fu energy. Look at these bad boys. And there's the plus one air weapons coming up for Hero. So Hero has decided to play the most passive game. In quite a while. And in my mind, that favors Dark quite a bit. But then again, I can't really blame Hero so much for it either, because lately it does really seem like Hero does not... Or sorry, Dark does not want to play late game whatsoever. So if he doesn't want to play late game at all, with this sort of opener here from Protoss, you kind of force the late game, right? But then again, in my mind, Hero is doing this against a Zerg who's insanely good at playing late game. So if that's the case, yeah, maybe lately, Dark has been a little hesitant to play late game. The guy is still a monster. Okay, nice little storm over here. Can we uh, abduct maybe a Colossus? Yoink! Can we uh, maybe like uh, abduct anything else? 
There are a couple of the obs or sorry, not observers. High Templar here waiting. Okay, yeah, we did get some feedbacks. But not before that abduction landed. The Colossus 2 exposed. And you can see that range to the lurkers is pretty nice. Yeah, deals a lot of damage. I'm a little afraid that over the next couple of minutes, we're just going to see our Protoss player bleed out. Because he doesn't have a good answer against this at all. Now, Tempests are coming. And we already saw those being used very effectively in the previous game. Zealot Runby is being set up in the top right-hand corner of the map. Okay. That's a High Templar. Uh, I don't know. Storming right over there. These Zealots are going to need some units as well to be addressed, I guess, by the Zerg. So you know what? This, this is dealing more damage than I anticipated. Some Zerg units that will pop out of cocoons, I'm sure, will run on over in that direction eventually. Revelation has been used by an Oracle to show these uh, Tempests where to fire. One Hydra over here, absolute legend, scaring off <laughs> both of those Tempests. But eventually the Nexus did go down. But those Zealots are still dealing damage though. Yeah. Okay. So in the end, I think that small group of Zealots achieved ah, a decent amount of damage on the other side of the map too. If it wasn't for those Colossi getting freely abducted, I think I would have liked this a little bit better for Hero overall, if I'm being honest with you. So already there was a Spire built to try and go into some Corruptor play. And those Corruptors are going to be phenomenal when it comes to fighting Tempest, at least in theory. This is the new Tempest. There's a lot of Storm Energy available too. So maybe the Corruptors can't really achieve that much, but at least that's what Hero is going up against right now. Dark trying his best to be as obnoxious as possible with those units of his. Looks like that lurker over here is now serving as tree fertilizer. A little sad. Plus two air weapons coming up already. Massive improvement in, the, in particular on those carriers, which I'm assuming we're going to see eventually. That's a lot of zealots going down for free. Okay. How good is this Tempest High Templar army going to be against this Viper Lurker Corruptor Force? Obviously, there's a lot more other units in the mix too, but those are really the only units that matter. But Oracle throwing down the Revelation? Yeah, really nice. We once again had a bit of counterattack damage as well on the other side of the map. Maybe that's just scaring Dark a little bit. Dark going into as many upgrades as possible. This turtley style, though, from Hero, I, I'm personally not a big fan of it. Not, not necessarily as a player, but as like a commentator and a viewer. Like in this game, Hero's basic game plan is just to do nothing until he maxes out. And now he's there, but he can't really fight the Zerg very effectively. It reminds me a little bit of what we've seen from Terrans over the last year, you know? Very passive play, very little action, especially on maps like Gresvin. Dark is trying desperately to prevent this game from being too turtly, though. So he's throwing loads of resources at this base, hoping that he can kill it. Maybe he can kill the base eventually, but if he loses all of his troops in the process, there will be a counterattack from Hero. In the meantime, by the way, Dark taking basically all of the bases on his side of the map. Now suddenly, okay, we have Storm being used on the Tempest. But it turns out Tempests have a lot more energy than Corruptors do. And even though the Queens may come to the front for transfusions, a lot of those Corruptors have already fallen. Revelation over here is going to reveal all of those Lurkers on the ground too. And I think that, yeah, the Tempest transition here is working out wonderfully. This time around, okay. I think we should see the Mama ship coming out. I don't see Dark GGing out here. He's going Corruptor Hydra, which is an amazing unit composition, of course. I don't know, actually. Eh, you know what? Nah, I'm not 100% convinced. This is a strange unit comp, though. So Dark actually setting up like a little arc over here of all of his Corruptors to try and negate as many storms as possible to try and make sure that those... Oh, there's the Loco Maneuver. To try and make sure that those Archons don't deal that much damage. The Queens and the Hydras here reinforcing this, trying their very best. Some of those Archons underneath, though, are having a grand old time dealing so much damage to these clumped up Protoss units. In the end, the Tempests do die. But this is, I guess, a good situation where we can see the strength of the Mama ship. So, the Mama ship has gotten a complete rework. 
It's cheaper now, so it's no longer minus 400, minus 400, but minus 300, minus 300. Plus, all of its abilities are now cooldown based. It no longer perma cloak units underneath. That's now an activated ability. Look at her. She's tiny now as well. Look at what they did to my mom. She used to be big. Then she got a radius reduction. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It does look a little cursed to just sort of see it hanging out with the rest of the army. So all of these abilities over here, they are cooldown based. Weird. Okay. Void Rays are going to be the name of the game right now here for Hero. I think Dark was a little over eager there with that aggression of his though. Yeah, in the end, the traits have been Protoss favorite, and the economy, it's been slightly better for Zerg throughout this game, and over the last few minutes for sure. But not with such a margin that Dark can just start trading this cost inefficiently. If you look at the army size graph... Yeah, this is kind of what my ladder games tend to look like too, except when I play Zerg over here, my Zerg army will go all the way down over there. And the Protoss army will sort of stay at this this height up here. The same happens whenever I play Protoss against Zerg and I get to that maxed out Skytos army. It feels amazing. The strongest Zerg late game composition is Spellcaster focus. So you really want to be going both Vipers as well as Infestors. And that seems to be what Dark is doing right now. He's going for one of those army compositions that require seven different hotkeys to control properly. I'm only slightly exaggerating, but most of them do require a minimum of four, which is very tricky. Um, yeah, not, not easily done. I think Hero probably has got his units on two control groups, because that's what he usually does. I think the Prism probably has one separate button. Okay. Now the Mama ship definitely does need to cast its spells individually from the High Templar. So we'll have to see how this ends up going down here. Vipers ready once again to abduct these units. Are we going to activate the cloak? I think we will, but it's going to be so awkward though. So I think the idea is to activate the cloak and then to push in. I'm not exactly sure. There's some parasitic bombs going down. Much easier to target these days. There's a time warp as well. Not quite as powerful as it once used to be. Look at... Oh, my God. No splits there at all from Hero. Completely bruising all of his uh, Void Rays here for no apparent reason. Just because he didn't split. It was the Mama ship, too, that was affected there by the Parasitic Bomb, if I'm not mistaken. So, it was a pretty easy target to just click on and move out of the way. And that's the sort of stuff. So, here's the, be here's the Cloaking Field activated. It's so funny. It's the first time I see this, actually, in a pro game. Yeah, instantly the Mama ship gets abducted. That's minus 300, minus 300, it seems. I'm not sure what the use is of using the cloaking field. Like, at what point do you use the cloaking field? Do you use it to retreat? Probably not. Do you use it to engage? Probably not either. So you just don't? You just don't use it? You just use it sometimes? I mean, it's a cooldown, so you may as well. You're not wasting your energy on it, but... Hmm. Funny, funny little ability. It really only makes sense as a passive, now that I think about it a little bit more. Massive Parasitic Bomb Fungal Growth combo over here. Are we gonna see a split from Hero? Yeah, well, we see one after all of the units have already mostly died. Obviously, I understand with Fungal Growth it's hard to do it, but there wasn't even an attempt. Okay. Hero gets shut down here in the late game. Yeah, I, I feel like Dark is significantly better in the late game. And that's not to say that Hero is bad. That's something that a lot of people always hear whenever I say such things. Whenever I make a statement like that, it's like, Loco, so you think that... No, that's not what I said. I just think, I just think that overall, the late game control of the top level Zerks is better than the late game control of the top level Protosses. He just walked his entire army into the Lurker Spines. Probably because he was looking at the Zealot fight or whatever, but... Yeah, you can see it reflected here at least somewhat as well in the APM difference. 457 APM on average throughout this game by Dark. 284 here by Hero. 
Dark is just simply playing a faster game. He's gonna move into these lurkers once again. This time around, it's with a bunch of immortals, I guess. But there's just not enough stuff. Ay, 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 ay. It's so painful to watch sometimes. GG is cold, and it's Dark who obtains the victory. Well, at the very least, that means that we're gonna see one more game in this Best of Five series. In the finals, it will take place on Alcyone. Now, just real quick to finish my thought. I think in a lot of people's minds, at the professional level, Protoss versus Zerk seems to be Zerk favored. And I think in a lot of people's minds, that's because Protoss is not strong enough against Zerk. Honestly, and I know this is a bit of a controversial opinion, so feel free to disagree with me, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. In my mind, the very best late game Zerk players are Dark and Serral, and I think they're just simply better than the very best Protoss players in the late game. It doesn't help that some of the greatest Protoss players we've ever had historically are doing their mandatory military service or they quit playing the game. And Yeah, I feel like when you look at those late game armies, Zerk, like for example, or Zerk's rather, like for example, Serral and Dark just simply squeeze more value out of their units than players like, for example, Hero do. Because the sample size is so small, I think it's really hard to draw conclusive evidence when it comes specifically to late game Zerg versus Protoss. Now, I do think that Protoss is underperforming at the professional level by just a little bit, especially in the Protoss versus Terran matchup. But I really don't know if Protoss needs buffs in the late game against Zerg. I really am not convinced that that is the case. A lot of people seem to be, yeah, thinking that that is the case. So, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But I watch a lot of StarCraft 2 and I see so many of those games and I, I I tend to see more... Okay, let me put it like this. I tend to see more mistakes from Protoss in the absolute late game than you see from the highest level Zerks. Because if you look at the Zerg players right below the names that I just named, I guess guys like, for example, Raynor and Solar and whatnot are also pretty darn good at playing that late game, right? But if you go below that... Every Zerg seems to struggle against Protoss late game. Especially on the ladder. I don't know a single Zerg player that enjoys playing late game against Protoss. Especially, like, I've done years and years and years of coaching in StarCraft 2. Uh, I've been coaching Zerg players since, like, 2014 or whatever. And most people these days, they, get to, they, they tend to get stuck in Diamond League. Platinum League, Diamond League or so, that's where a lot of people get stuck. And every single one of them has always had in common that they do not want to play Protoss in the late game. And the end result there is usually that they will play hyper aggressively in the mid game just to try and prevent the game from going the distance. And that's usually where the game is thrown. So that style that Hero played in the previous game would work phenomenally well against pretty much everybody out there that isn't Dark or Serral, because he would get to a max that army that looks near unbeatable, and then he goes with a steamroller approach through the center of the map and murders everything, right? It's just that if you have guys that are really good at, well, connecting those fungal growths and parasitic bombs and micro their units and split up their corruptors and negate the high templar and also maybe roll in banelings get the lurkers in the right position macro on the back of it right when you get all of that to work at the same time in unison then you can counter that late game army as confidently as dark and serral sometimes seem to do but it is much easier said than done i can tell you that as somebody who has sucked against protos late game ever since they took out the Infested Terra. <laughs> it's been a long time. And I've tried working on it, man, but it is not easy. Anyways, we have a normal game right here from Hero. I really hope he does not decide to sit back very passively again. So this is an Oracle start over here, so he's just trying to deal as much damage as possible. Has only lost a single Adept so far, and he's killed six drones. Not a bad start here whatsoever. Third Nexus here, done at this point. We've got Blink together with the ground upgrades here coming up for our Protoss. Two more drones end up going down. Dark not going straight into the Hydra then this time around. He's decided to go and play a normal game as well. That being said, normal game with the plus one missile upgrade. Generally, we seem to see a lot more plus one melee at this level of play lately. But Dark has decided to go for the plus one missile. So that does mean he wants to stick around on Roaches and Ravagers at least for the foreseeable future. Alright, 
Here comes the Stalker Ball. It's critical to keep those Oracles alive at this stage in the game. Because you can deal so much damage against Ravagers and Queens and... Okay. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't need them necessarily, but it's so nice to have them, though. They put in so much work. All right, well, the Oracles just get all army hotkeyed forward. You can see that it happens multiple times over and over and over again. That's now the third Oracle going down due to aggressive all army hotkeying. But one thing that Hero is doing phenomenally well here is microing his Stalkers. And maybe those Oracles are just collateral damage. Yeah, drones are now forced to pull from their hatcheries. I think this phenomenal control right here on the Stalkers may actually just win him the game. Oh my god. All right, well, in the end, it's Hero who obtains the victory over Dark 3-2-2. And this is usually one of the reasons why we see plus one melee being researched rather than the plus one missile upgrade. Zorklings just make it so much harder for Protoss to stand there and just blink their stalkers back like Hero was doing phenomenally well right here at the end. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. I know it's annoying that I ask, but it really does help. And if you really enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live.